Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. When a wildfire breaks out, planes usually take flight. Fighting the flames from the air is the quickest and safest solution for large-scale burns. Aerial firefighting can be particularly effective in controlling fires in remote or inaccessible areas. Pilots also provide an eye in the sky, informing crews on the ground about the fire's movements and spread. Plus, more planes these days are equipped to fight fires. Thanks to a genius U.S. invention called a modular airborne firefighting system. The MAFS system was first created in the 1960s, but has greatly evolved to become more efficient and accurate. The original MAFS system, or MAFS-1, was developed by the United States Forest Service. It consisted of a series of tanks containing water or retardant mounted inside a cargo aircraft, typically a C-130 Hercules. The MAFS-1 has a straight drop configuration, meaning that the retardant is dropped directly out of the aircraft's cargo hold through two nozzles. This configuration allows for a wider coverage area, but it is also less precise. As firefighting technology evolved, the MAFs did too. The newer version of the system, aptly called MAFs 2, internally turns the pipe towards the plane's side door. Then, a small attachment shoots the water or retardant out. This ramp system allows for more controlled drops of retardant. MAFS-2 also has a greater capacity than MAFS-1. It can hold up to 3,000 gallons of retardant, while MAFS-1 can hold up to 2,700 gallons. MAFS-2 is also easier to install and remove than MAFS-1. This means that it can be used more flexibly and can be added or removed from an aircraft more quickly. Whether System 1 or 2 is being used before the aircraft takes off, it must be calibrated to ensure that the correct amount of liquid is dispensed. This is done by spraying the liquid onto a calibration pad on the ground and adjusting it as needed. Now we're ready to head to the fire zone. Once in the air, the aircraft approaches the wildfire at low altitude, typically between 150 and 200 feet above the ground. The pilot flies the aircraft in a pattern that allows the MAF system to release water or fire retardant in a controlled manner over the fire. The liquid pours through a series of nozzles located on the underside of the aircraft. This ensures that it all hits the ground in a specific pattern that will maximize its effectiveness.
After dropping the liquid, the plane climbs back up to a safe altitude to prepare for the next drop. This process is repeated until the fire is under control or the aircraft runs out of liquid. On the ground, crews coordinate with the aircraft to ensure that the drops are hitting the right areas and that the fire is extinguished as quickly as possible. In California, a hot and dry climate combined with high winds means wildfire season can wreak havoc year long. To stop an out of control burn, crews often resort to dropping fire retardants. These are chemical coatings made of fire resistant material. Retardants are useful in protecting homes and infrastructure in the path of a wildfire. By coating the area around a structure with retardant, firefighters can create a barrier that can help prevent the fire from reaching the structure. Retardants are cost effective compared to other firefighting methods, such as using helicopters to drop water. This is because a single plane can cover a larger area with retardant, and the material can be applied more precisely. Of course, there are some dangers of overusing retardants. chemicals contaminate streams and other bodies of water, which can be harmful to fish and other wildlife. There are also potential health risks to humans. Breathing in fire retardant can result in respiratory problems and other health issues. In some cases, a retardant that's meant to protect property can also do damage to it. The material is corrosive and may damage roofs, cars, and other surfaces if not washed off quickly. Overall, wildfire retardants are a valuable tool in fighting wildfires in California and beyond. Their use should be carefully considered and monitored to minimize any potential risks and to ensure that they are applied effectively. One of the planes often used to drop retardants is the Bombardier also known as the Canadair CL-415. It is an amphibious aircraft. One of the main features of the CL-415 is its ability to scoop water from a body of water while in flight. The aircraft can skim the surface of a lake, river, or other body of water and fill its tanks with water in just a matter of seconds. This allows the aircraft to make multiple drops on fire without having to return to a base to refill. The CL-415 can drop up to 1,620 gallons of water per load. This amphibious ability means this plane is perfect for fighting hard-to-reach fires.
the CL-415 can access remote areas that may be difficult for other aircraft to reach. The number of lakes available in Canada makes it the preferred aircraft to use. When not dropping water, pilots and crew in the CL-415 are essential for airborne observation of wildfires. While flying over a fire, they can relay information to ground crews about the location, size, and behavior of the flames. This can help firefighters develop strategies to extinguish them. Of course, before being dispatched to fly over a real fire, pilots must undergo intense training. Simulators allow them to practice and develop the skills they need in an emergency. Simulators allow pilots to practice how they'd react in a real-life wildfire in a safe and controlled environment without the risk of injury or property damage. This can be especially valuable for new firefighters who are still developing their skills and may not be ready for the inevitable unexpected challenges that arise in a wildfire situation. Computer models also allow pilots to practice with the latest technology and for their trainers and teachers to evaluate their performance and provide feedback in a structured and objective manner. Speaking of the latest technology, NASA now has a high-flying solution to track fires. The ER-2, a multi-mission aircraft, operates at altitudes from 20,000 feet to 70,000 feet. That's twice the altitude of commercial airlines. The ER-2 carries the airborne visible infrared imaging spectrometer, a virus, which uses over 224 sensors to identify, measure, and monitor natural features of the Earth's surface and atmosphere based on reflective light from the sun. This information is used to create detailed maps of the Earth's surface, including vegetation cover and moisture content. During a wildfire, a virus can detect the heat signature of the fire and measure the extent of the burn scar. This data can be used to track the spread of the fire and assess the damage caused. A virus can also be used to map the vegetation recovery in the affected area after the fire has been extinguished. In addition to a virus, the ER-2 also carries other instruments that can be used to monitor wildfires. These include the Cloud Absorption Radiometer, or CAR, which can measure the amount of smoke and other aerosols in the atmosphere. Furthermore, the High Altitude Monolithic Microwave Integrated Circuit Sounding Radiometer can measure the temperature and moisture content of the atmosphere. Overall, the ER-2 plays an important role in providing valuable data for wildfire management and helping to protect communities from the devastating effects of these natural disasters. Aerial technology is playing an ever-increasing and ever-important role in the fight against wildfires. From the mapping imagery produced by NASA's high-altitude research plane, the ER-2, to the bombardier aircraft that scoops up and drops large quantities of water with the self-contained firefighting system known as the MAF system. 
Together, these tools provide critical support in the effort to combat wildfires and protect communities and natural resources from the devastating effects of these natural disasters. By leveraging the latest technological advances, firefighters can develop more effective strategies for containing and extinguishing wildfires and protecting lives, homes, and communities. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.